Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be making a Photoshop-esque color picker. I'll show you how to set up the UI and then we'll write two fairly straightforward scripts and get it all hooked up. Okay, before we get started, your dimensions might be a bit different than mine. I'm using a 4K reference resolution on my canvas. It shouldn't matter as long as you set your anchors properly, so pay attention to that. Inside the main window that you want your color panel to be in, create a empty game object to hold our big saturation and value panel. I set the anchor of this object to the left so that I would have the option to set the width and height. Inside that game object, we will create a raw image object and scale it to match the parent. Then we will set the origin to the center. This is an important step, so make sure the anchor is set how mine is. Next, we'll add a regular image object as a child to act as our cursor. I'll call it Picker. Let's change the sprite to be the default knob sprite and set it to be a relatively small size. Next, we'll create another raw image to add as our hue bar. I'll anchor it to the left so it moves with the bigger panel, and I'll resize it and move it into position. Rename this one to hue. Now, we can add a slider object as a child to the hue bar, change the direction to bottom to top, and resize it to fit its parent. I'll just turn off the opacity for the fill area and the background images. I'll then just change the height of the handle to something thinner and give it a bit of an indent. Now let's collapse the slider children and rename the slider. Next, we'll just need to duplicate the whole hue object, rename the duplicate to output, and then we'll delete the slider. And now we can just move the image over a little bit. Add an input field for our hex color codes and adjust it to our liking. And now we'll just add a little button to confirm our color selection and close the panel. So now before we get to the code, make sure that your saturation and value panel has a width and a height. To do this, just go to the anchor settings and hold shift and click on the left anchor. And then now for the inner panel, we'll need to set the anchor to the center point. So do the same thing, hold shift and select the center anchor. Okay, so let's create two C sharp scripts and we'll call one color picker control and the other one SV image control. First, we'll start with color picker control. So open that up. We'll clear out the unnecessary stuff. Okay, and we'll add using Unity UI. And since I'm using TextMask Pro components, we'll import TM Pro as well. Okay, so let's start by defining the variables we'll need. First, we'll need references to our current values. And then we'll need references to our raw images. And we'll mark them as serializable so we can set them in the inspector. Next, we'll grab a reference to our slider and our text field. After that, we can create references for all the textures we'll be creating. The first function we'll need is to set up our hue image. Hue texture equals new texture 2D, and then we'll pass in a size of 1 by 16. And in order for this to work properly, we'll need to set the texture wrap mode to clamp. Let's also give it a name. Next, we'll iterate over the pixels of the texture and then set each pixel based on its height. We'll use the color.hsv to RGB and then divide i by the texture height to get our hue. Make sure to cast one of these as a float to get a proper float division. And then we'll put in 1 for the saturation and 0.95f for the value. I find one to be a bit too bright. Next, let's apply the texture and then set our starting hue. And then we'll set the hue's raw image texture to be that texture. Now we'll create a similar function to create our saturation and value texture. This time, we'll make it 16 by 16 and clamp it as well. For this texture, we'll do a nested loop to iterate over each pixel. Saturation will be controlled by the width and the value will be controlled by the height. For this color.hsv to RGB, we'll pass in the current hue, and then we'll divide x by the width and y by the height to get the other two values. And don't forget to cast them as floats. 
will apply this texture, set our default values, and then add the texture to the raw image component. And now we'll need to make a function to create our output image, much in the same way we did for the first one. This time we'll just use all of our current values to create the pixels, and then we'll apply the texture and add it to the component. And next, we'll need to create a function that we can use to call whenever we want to update our output image. We'll get a version of our current color and set each pixel based on that. This time, we just need to apply the texture and then add the code to change our material's color. And next, we're going to want to make a public function that takes in two floats for the saturation and value from the other script. We just need to set our current values to those values and then call the update image function. And now we just need a public function to update the SV panel every time the hue slider is changed. We'll do a nested loop to iterate over the pixels and set the texture the same way we did before. Apply the texture and call the update output image function. Now let's go to the top and create a start function. And we will add all of our functions in this order. First, we'll create the hue texture, then the SV texture and then the output texture, and then we'll call the update function. Okay, so back in Unity, I'll add a cube and position it next to the car for testing. I'll add a material and assign it to the cube. And next I'll grab the color picker object and add our color picker control script to it, drag it to the top, and then I'll assign all of the objects. So now if we test it, we can see that it generates all of our textures, but we can't change anything yet. Let's fix that. So here in the SV image control script, let's remove the unwanted stuff. And at the top, we'll add Unity Engine.Event Systems and Unity Engine.UI. We'll need to get a serialized image object for our picker, a reference to our raw image, a reference to our color control, and one to each of those two rec transforms. Let's create an awake function to fill all of the variables. We'll set the picker transform to be in the bottom left. And now we'll create a function to send our picker's values over to the color control script. We need a position and local space for our picker so we can clamp it inside. And we'll create two floats to hold a variable for the half size of our rec transform. And then here we'll just write some simple code to clamp it inside. And now we'll create an x and y variable with our local position plus our offset from the center. And now we just need to normalize the two variables to get them between 0 and 1 by dividing their location by the size of the transform. And then we'll update the location of the picker, change its color, which will just make the opposite value of the value. And then we will send the normalized values over to our color control script. Now, if we go up to the top, beside mono behavior, we can implement the eye drag handler and eye pointer click handler interfaces. And then if you control click on them in Visual Studio, you bring up the quick refactorings to easily implement their functions. Grab them and we'll move them to the bottom. All we're going to do with these is make them call our update color function. And we're going to pass in the event data. Now we can just save this script and head back to Unity. Add the SV image control script to the main SV panel with the raw image on it and then assign the picker image in the inspector. Okay, now go to the hue slider and scroll down to the on value changed event. We're gonna drag in our color picker object and select the update SV image function. So now let's give that a test and that should be working. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the text field working. At the bottom of the color picker control script, let's add a new function that we can call when the user presses enter after putting in a hex color code. We'll start by returning out of the function if there's less than six characters. Next, we'll need a variable to store our color into. And then now we can use the 
color utility function to convert the string into a hex code. If the parse is successful, we will use the color.rgb to hsv function to update our current values. Now we can update the slider value and we'll set the text field back to blank. And lastly, we just call the update output image function. Up in our output image function, after we apply the texture, we can set the text field's text to our current color's hex. Now let's save everything and head back to Unity. Now that that's set up, all we have to do is add the on text input to our on and edit callback function on the hex field. Give it a try and everything should work. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and thanks for watching.